dynamic scoring team. Their smaller team, I know we're gonna get into that a little bit more as the game goes on. But um, hey, I love David against Goliath type matchups. <laughs> we'll see if uh, Texas Southern can play the Goliath role and, and FDU can play the David role. We'll see. Well, both teams like to play up tempo basketball. It's Texas Southern that controls the tip. The first of our doubleheader is underway from Dayton, Ohio. And again, FDU, they will move around. They're not gonna sit still even a little bit. DJ Henry dribbles to the corner, gives it off to David Barnes. They work it back along the perimeter. John Walker with the shot clock winding down. Granger for three, in and out, no good. And the smallest guy on the floor gets the rebound. You have to keep your eyes on turnovers with Texas Southern early in the game. They've had problems not taking care of the ball. How about Joe Munden, who's able to high step his way to the basket and lay it in? FDU, it's seventh NCAA tournament appearance. They've won one time here at Dayton. In fact, it was so important to the school that they raised a banner in their gymnasium. 2 nothing, make it 2-2. Nice athletic move by Carl Nicholas. And that's where Texas Southern have the advantage inside, so we'll have to keep our eyes on points in the paint. Oh, Dimitri Roberts for three. And Tobin Anderson says, hey, get up. Get up into their face. They're going to defend them from one end of the floor to the other end of the floor. Yeah, just major en energy from both teams. FDU's try to, they're going to try to trap, mix the game up, make it a little dirty. They get control. Almanar gets to the basket, no good. Rebound is taken down by Barnes. Loose ball, picked up by the Knights, and a turnaround jumper by Sean Moore. He's got a lot of folks here from his hometown. He, he grew up uh, outside of Columbus. Yeah, I really love Sean Moore. He's their defensive specialist. You know, at the end of the game, who's never has the most points for TSU? That's who he's going That's for. right. Three-pointer from up top, no good. And a rebound, good box out by the Knights. Grant Singleton comes down with it. 7-2 score, FDU on top. Nice shot fake by Roberts, heading to the basket. Kicks it out. Here's a three for more. It's good. It splashes it home. And he's got five early points. And Johnny Jones calls a timeout. The Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPNU. For more info on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Johnny Jones wanted that timeout pretty quickly there, Avery. Because of this kind of stuff that's happening. Roberts picks the pocket. Heads up. Shot is blocked. And he's fouled. So he'll go to the free throw line. There's no communication from Texas Southern on offense. Yeah, take a look at the uh, profile of FDU, founded in 1942. It's the largest private university in the Great Garden State of New Jersey. Northeast Conference, Ron Bloomberg, the first designated hitter in Major League Baseball history, went to FDU. You know a little bit about MLB and designated hitter. Yes, I do. <laughs> and it's into the National League now, which has uh, really been important. All right, so Roberts, 81% from the free throw line. We mentioned he came into this game with more than 2,100 points in his college career. A transfer from Division II, St. Thomas Aquinas, the school that Tobin Anderson came from. There are three transfers from St. Thomas Aquinas. Right now, this game is being played at two different speeds. FDU's in fifth speed, and Texas Southern is in first gear. Right. They haven't adjusted to FDU's tempo. I love the way that FDU gets up and down the floor. They're scrambling, they're trapping, they're moving. This is their offense. Five out ball movement, player movement. You see, there's no big guy in the paint. Yeah, they allow that uh, that paint to be wide open to drive into it. Shot clock at nine, singleton for three, no good. Easy rebound for Nicholas. Here come the Tigers. DJ Henry. Looks like that was Texas Southern's second rebound of the game. John Walker with the drive. Baseline jumper no good. Look out for the Knights. Here comes Moore. He's got five early points. It is interesting, though, Avery, to watch that there's nobody in the paint unless they're cutting. A three. It's good from the sideline. Joe Munden who missed the first seven games because of injury, but he hasn't missed a beat since. And what FDU lacks in size, they make up for it, and ball handling ability, skill. And that'll end a 12-0 run. And John Walker the third, the lanky big man, is able to get that one to go down, and he's fouled.
And now you see FDU, they're rotating in four players. But here's a nice drive. This is one of the ways Texas Southern can take advantage of, of the size difference is their best shot sometimes, their missed shot can be a best shot by securing those offensive rebounds. Yeah, so John Walker will go to the free throw line. Walker 68%. There have been four new players that have come in for FDU. Make it five now. So it's like a hockey line. Walker started at Texas A&M, averaged 3.2 points per game. But he said coming to Texas Southern was the greatest decision of his life. And it's a nine-point game. Lamo running the point now for FDU. Reynolds caught in a double team. They swing it around. Three for Emmanuel is no good. And now, and Ray Granger with the rebound. But that's another quality shot. And then what it allows you to do is get back, set your defense, so you can keep Texas Southern out of transition. Coach Anderson, he'll, he'll take that shot. Ball was kicked out of bounds, so it will be up to you basketball. Along with Avery Johnson and John Rothstein, Gene Steratora, and Tom McCarthy. Now this is a set play for a little cross pick uh, inside for Tweedy, but the Texas Southern caught up with it. You know I'm really big on after timeout yes, plays. Yes, you are, yep. Shot clock is under 10. Roberts, keep an eye on him. FDU's made three threes so far. Roberts deadens that off the side of the iron. The rebound by the Knights blocked away. Tweedy could not get it up. He may be... Could have shot fake a little bit. They never really had control of the ball. No. So now Texas Southern into the offensive ends. Barnes goes to the left sideline, whistle blows, and a foul on the floor. They'll get Tweedy with a bump. Texas Southern, they're led by Johnny Jones, notable alums Michael Strahan and Megan D. Stallion. Of course, in the Southwestern Houston, Athletic Conference. Houston, Texas, just a little quick. Now, get my, both of my kids were born in Houston. Yes. All right, just had to get that in. Now, let's get back to business. <laughs> <laughs> that foul is called on Blygen. So, a foul without even inbounding the basketball. They get in the, to the perimeter to multi. Out of Barnes, behind his back with his dribble. Pull up elbow jumper, no good. And the rebound taken down by the Knights and Tweedy. And I've been waiting for Barnes to get a little bit yeah. more aggressive, get into the game. This is a guy that had 52 points in three SWAT tournament games. He's got to get going. Manuel assessing to the free throw line, sweeps it to the corner. Quick first step by Blygen. They want to get it to Roberts. He's got it for three, no good. They're not afraid to fire threes. No, but I love watching FDU play offense because the ball always finds the open man. Mm -hmm. Here's Nicholas. He can't finish, but the cleanup is there by Barnes. And now it's a seven-point game. Sometimes when you miss an outside shot, you don't feel sorry for yourself. You get back in there and make a positive play for your team. Yeah, because they are not a very good three-point shooting team. In fact, third worst three-point shooting team in the country. So they have to rely, as you said, Avery, on getting those offensive boards as Tweedy knocks it out of bounds for FDU. So Barnes is moving around. He relocated off the perimeter and nice left-handed finish inside. Texas Southern's capitalizing on this drought now. Yeah, on that last FDU possession, I don't think it's in their best interest to try to back down some of the bigger Texas Southern, Southern players. Just keep the ball moving. Spread the floor. That's where they're going to make money. Speaking of making money, off the glass is Barnes. He has four points. And it's a five-point game. 7-0 run for Texas Southern to get back within reach. Quick drive, quick pass, and the foul more. Count the bucket. Wow, he's got seven. They call him Fuzz. And he did not look like uh, he was a youngster on this one. Yeah, it all started with the breakdown of the pick and roll coverage on the left side. Seemed like two Texas Southern players weren't on the same page, but Moore's not feeling sorry for anybody. He said, I'm going, I'm going to be on the same page with my teammate. He averages just under seven per game. And he makes the free throw, so he's already exceeded that. He has eight. 
What he said, and I thought it was interesting, and you can see it, he said teams are just not used to our style of play, so we capitalize on that. And that's the style of play right there. They connect on on loose balls all over the place. Well, teams in the NEC, they're a little bit more familiar with it. When you only have one, one shot, Southern hasn't played against anybody this year with this. Texas Southern hasn't played against any team this year with this style. Dude, you better be careful calling Texas Southern. I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to pull my name off the floor at Southern <laughs> University. They're going to remove it. <laughs> they move the ball around. They give it to Multi. He takes a three, tries to back it home, no good. Offensive board, loose man underneath, and he lays it in. It's Chris Craig. His first bucket. Roberts. They like to get the ball in the hands of Roberts as much as possible. And this, you know, they had this starters back in the game. The bench, they, they really weren't positive. Munden with the missed shot. Here come the Tigers quickly up the floor. Multi, fadeaway jumper, no good. Loose ball, rebound. Take it down by Almanor. Singleton running the point. Roberts setting the screen. You'll notice Almanor, that's his game right there. That's an assist. That's an assist for Almanor in that situation. It's not going to show up on the stat sheet. Solid screen without moving. Nice finish by Roberts. Meanwhile, the opposite ends. Chris Craig has his second bucket. Yeah, that was a really good screen because it gave space to the smaller Roberts. Under 12 to play, seven point lead. See, Texas Southern, not a surprise, 12 points in the paint already. Munden, back to the basket. Little shot fake. Goes up top for Singleton. They swing it around. Munden with eight on shot clock, it's swiped away. Look out, Chris Craig. That, well, it's a foul. It wasn't intentional. Seven point lead, 2013 FDU. Hold it on with 11.35 to play here at the first half. He's really helped turn things around. It's been an injury-riddled season for Johnny Jones. They were, picked, they were picked to finish first in the swag. You're talking about saving your best for last. That's what Texas Southern has done this year. They turned it on at the right time. They've been injured all year, especially P.J. Henry. You know, he missed a seven-game stretch where they were one for six. He was sorely missed. How about that beautiful feed? Reynolds to the basket. That was just knowing where your teammate was going to be, even as the defense approached you with Emmanuel. Multi to the basket. No good. Ball knocked out of bounds by FDU. Multi's just playing at another gear, but watch Reynolds here on the left side. Little back cut here. And actually, they were working on that back cut. Yesterday and shoot around they worked on it before the game you can tell that that's something that they drill every single day Give coach uh, Tobin Anderson credit That's his that's been his system. He just didn't start playing this way at FDU. Yeah, we asked him yesterday about where he got his style from he said it was first As Carter missed the jumper it was first Bob Knight's motion offense and then it evolved into this kind of Rick Pitino style of just pressuring left and right. Ten and a half to play Reynolds. Run the point to Emmanuel. They go bounce pass to the corner and a foul going up. Almanor will get to the free throw line. He's probably the biggest guy on the floor for FDU. Yeah, and in this situation, no, Farouk, he's got to get over earlier. Remember we talked about being in the right position? If, you, if your positioning isn't right, it's going to lead to fouls. The NEC's most improved player makes the first free throw. Best Coke ever? Only way to find out. Take a test. Take a taste, excuse me. One of the things going back to that Johnny Jones interview time, it'll be interesting to see if this game is a close game in the last five minutes. Because you're talking about a coach in Johnny Jones that's been here before. He's this is his third, uh, first four. You know, he's taken LSU to the tournament, North Texas. You know, it, it, he has solid record. The winner plays Purdue. 
and this is Coach Anderson's first go around. So we'll see if experience matters even on the sidelines. Well, Barnes just missed a little bunny inside. Reynolds bringing the ball up. They go outside for Emmanuel. Almanor wants it. Such a great story. Left side of the lane goes up too strong. Ball is ripped down by Texas Southern. Almost got away with a little travel. There. I can sense the, the hot <laughs> breath on my back from the FDU fans who thought there was a travel there. <laughs> now you see FDU in a zone. That's the middle of the floor. That's the soft spot. And Farouk slides right through that soft spot and lays it in. Excellent zone offense by Texas Southern. We'll see if FDU makes an adjustment at halftime when they want to utilize that zone to cover that middle up. Singleton for three, short. Doesn't get the bounce, ball is tipped out, whistle blows. I think that foul is going against Texas Southern. So a lot of times versus zone, you want to get the ball in the middle either via penetration yeah, like or with the pass. And nice job. Good shot fake too. To get Almanor up a little bit. Middle was wide open. Carter checks out for Texas Southern, so does Craig. Unlike a 2-3 zone, when you run a 1-2-2, two, two, that's the real soft spot versus a 1-2-2. Two, two. Emmanuel, they wanted a lot to him. Instead, they go up to Reynolds. 9-15 to play here in the first half. Singleton. Back in, Blygen, shot is no good off the weak side. And we talked about it earlier. Singleton, in that situation, he's not going to win that matchup on the post against a stronger, taller Texas Southern player. That ball has to move to the weak side. Yeah, so don't get greedy with it, right? Yes. Barnes missed that shot, but an easy rebound for Walker. And he just tosses it back out for Barnes. He's open for three. No good. They continue to be cool from the outside. 0 for 6 from beyond the arc. And in that situation, Barnes was just hesitant. Now they're going to send Reynolds to the free throw line. All right, so this is what FDU did. They, they got their coach, Tobin Anderson, from St. Thomas Aquinas. And then they got three players from that team that was a perennial playoff team on the Division II level. I'm not going to mention the coach's name, but there, there's a coach that took another Power 5 job in football, and he said, I'm bringing my luggage with me. That's the same thing <laughs> Coach Anderson did. He brought his luggage with him. Well, there's Tobin Anderson, spent nine seasons at St. Thomas Aquinas in Rockland County, New York, led the Spartans to seven st straight trips to the D2 NCAA tournament. And what did he tell us yesterday? And I don't know if you agree with this, because you were a really good guard. He said, guards travel. He said, I can get guards to play at a higher level. It's the six foot eight, six foot ten guys that I don't know if I can get to play at a higher level. And their guards, their smaller guards, they've proven Dimitri Roberts, Grant Singleton, that they can play against higher level players. They combine for 40 points in an A-10 game right. versus an A-10 school. St. Joe's. They, yeah, St. Joseph's Hawks. So they're not scared. Speaking of his guard play, could you do this, Avery, one time? Absolutely. We need to have a dribble off the oh, next time. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> but no, that's impressive. He, he, uh, he told us that uh, Google did a commercial of him doing that, and he made, because I made $25,000. So if you show it, maybe people will look for that Google commercial. I'll make more money. Now, if you had said a three-point shooting contest, that would have been different. John Walker finishing that shot. Seven-point game. It, toward eight it, minutes to play. For it almost feels like FDU needs to be up by more than seven points. It feels like they should they should have a wider lead. Barnes, and he leaves it for the slamming Carl Nicholas. He's got four. He knew where his teammate was. Gilliam is covering Roberts. He's got his long arms to defend him. And now you can see Texas Southern's best defender, John Walker, on Moore. DJ Henry has it blocked from behind, but the cleanup is there beautifully by Nicholas and a timeout called by FDU.
right here with Tobin Anderson, you were concerned about turnovers and offensive rebounds for them. There was just an offensive rebound and a turner, turnover. How do you clean that up? Well, you're right on top of that, John. Yeah, the, the turnovers are hurting us a little bit right now, and the offensive boards hurt us bad. They probably got 10 or 12 points on offensive rebounding, so we got to keep on rebounding. We got a little bit stagnant, too. Got off to a good start. Sometimes the worst thing to do is get off to a good start, so we got to settle down and play a little bit better basketball. All right, have a good rest of the half. What's that? Have a good rest of the half. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Okay. Those are two New York guys going at it right there in that interview, right? <laughs> this is a great job. All right, so FDU with the basketball. The lead is at three. And I agree with Coach, a great neutralizer of turnovers. And Munden slides right along the baseline and lays it in. That was kind of easy. Yeah, that was too easy. That was like a curtain. That wasn't a wall on defense. Oh, he's got seven points. A three of four shooting. Gilliam's played a, a, some extra minutes here for Texas Southern, number 11. He finds Barnes and Henry. And that ball is deflected to the baseline, and FDU forces the turnover. And you can see the contrasting in styles. One team wants to really post up, play high, low. The other team, five out spread the floor, dribble drive, back cuts. Almanor up top for three. Yes! What did Coach Tobin tell us yesterday? When he took over last spring, he told Almanor, I don't think this is going to work. I don't think you can play this style. And Almanor said, Coach, I can play this style. He said, I really don't. I think you should transfer. He said, I'm going to prove you wrong. 14 points a game proves him wrong. Yeah, not only is Almanor proving him wrong, FDU's proven a lot of people wrong with their start of this game today. Nicholas on the high low can't convert. And Munden with the rebound. 5.45 to play here in the first half. Singleton. Little extra pass inside for Moore. Got it deflected. And loose ball picked up by Gillian, but he was out of bounds. Follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment. And defensively, Texas Southern, they're, they're going to have to make a decision on when they want to deny one pass away, when they want to be in help. Zone, mix up your zone into a man. you got to mix up your looks against this FDU offense. If not, that's going to consistently happen. Well, he's got eight points. He just hit back-to-back -back three pointers, and the lead is back to 11 for FDU on this 8-0 run. 5-10 to play here in the first half. And this is another situation where Texas Southern, they haven't seen a team with a, a stretch five. Wow, what a steal that was. Singleton with incredible hands. Roberts putting on dribbling display. Kicks it out for Munden, and his three-pointer was not close. Here come the Tigers. And a blocking foul is called. Roberts didn't get to the spot. But man, on that last FDU fast break, they miss Almanor for a layup. Tobin Anderson, first season at Fairleigh Dickinson. He said, I, I was the bridesmaid, but never the bride, about 15 times. He said, Division I coaches just weren't taking my call. FDU took his call, convinced him that his style of play would work. In fact, the day he was hired internally, he held a practice that night and then the next day. And they force another turnover, but Almanor loses it out of bounds. What do you got, John Rothstein? Well, Tom, just to piggyback off your point about Tobin Anderson, he also told me yesterday and today that making the transition as a head coach from Division II to Division I is easy because there's less responsibility. You have to do other things when you're not at the Division I level. When you get to D1, you're just coaching and recruiting. You compartmentalize much more, Tom. That's interesting. I would have thought there would be, would be additional responsibilities. I would have thought so. I know I had additional responsibilities. Although but, maybe at Division II you have to do the laundry and everything. Yeah, tape ankles. Yeah. P.J. Henry pull up 17-footer in and out. Ball tipped around and out of bounds. It'll be up to you basketball. Two 16 seeds. Texas Southern won the SWAC. And FDU finished second in the NEC. Merrimack was the champion. They're doing a heck of a job with that program, but they're transitioning to Division One. That's why they didn't come here. 
I love the skill set of Elmanor, being able to handle the ball, pick and pop, make some threes. Now this will be an isolation for Dimitri Roberts. Slip, pick and roll. Crossover with three on the shot clock. That's a two-point field goal. It's the largest lead of the half for FDU, and that was a thing of beauty. Yep, so they slipped the pick and roll so that they can bait Texas Southern into a switch so Dimitri Roberts can go into his one-on-one -on -one isolation move, and what a terrific crossover. He averages 16 and a half per game. He averaged 16 and a half last year in Division II. Texas Southern and the answer, aggressive athletic move by John Walker. And I think with Texas Southern, they're probably going to have to finish this game with Walker in at the five spot. Right. If they want to try to match up with FDU. I think FDU needs to continue to pick and pop with Elmador. Foul called on P.J. Henry. 36-25. Boy, there's a lot of action in this first half. Half of FDU's uh, field goals are threes, but Texas Southern has 22 points in the paint. But here's the offense for FDU. Yeah, Ansley Amanor just pick and pop five. Nice pivoting pass by Roberts. And then Roberts gets the mismatch and he puts him in the blender. The little. If he was a DJ, he would be mixing up a lot of different songs and genres on that crossover. <laughs> well, he's taking a breather right now. Singles into the basket, and the layup is good. A quick burst of speed. That was Singleton's first point. Yes, first bucket of the day. 12-2 run. I will say they're a confident bunch. Whistle blows, foul away from the ball. Be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Nice little left-handed drive here. Get downhill and finish with the left hand. Texas Southern is late on the rotation. It just seems like FDU's making Texas Southern pay for all of their mistakes defensively. Mm -hmm. And Walker can't convert the one-on-one. -on -one. And now a 13-point lead. The winner advances to take on Purdue on Friday in Columbus. I think in the, with the winner playing Purdue, two of Texas Southern's players or FDU players may have to stack on top of each other <laughs> and be the same size as Zach Eady. <laughs> Reynolds tried the backdoor pass, and it's a kick. He is a big dude. Stay tuned for AT&T at the half with Adam Lefko, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, and Seth Davis live from Atlanta with analysis of the first half and the latest tournament news. After uh, tonight's doubleheader, Avery's going to be heading to Denver for this weekend set of games. Oh, really excited to be back with Lisa Byington and Steve Smith. And Off the inbound, they go to Singleton, Almanor up top. Bert Bondi. Excellent producer. Roberts tries to leave it for Monday, and he's fouled going up, and he'll get two shots. Let's check in with John Rothstein. Well, Tom, we're seeing the edge right now that FDU plays with, really. It's resonating throughout the entire first half. Tobin Anderson told me these guys have something to prove, just like I do. They weren't recruited at this level, especially the players that came from Division II with him. This is a proving ground for the whole program, Tom. Yeah, and I think college basketball uh, this year, I mentioned this last night, all around college basketball, there are Division II players that are making a major impact in programs, and it will continue with the transfer portal the way it is. FDU 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Make it 8 of 9. And these last two minutes, it's going to really dictate, you know, what team is going into the locker room with momentum, which is important. Again, these different looks from FDU, you don't know whether they're coming. Straight up man. Hey. Barnes, he just couldn't finish, and the second, third, and fourth shots weren't there as well. That's a tough miss. Singleton to the basket, foul going up, and he'll go back to the free throw line. What happened on this one here, Avery? First of all, on this drive, it seems like that could have been a basic left-handed layup, but tried to get a little too cute or 
I don't know if if P.J. Henry lost it on the way up. Well, now Singleton, who is a 92% free throw shooter, makes the first one. Gilliam checks back in for Texas Southern, and Barnes will take a seat. So when a player is 92%, when the coach goes to sleep at night the night before, that's a check. He's not going to sleep worrying about that. Trust me. He would be shocked if he misses a free throw. Well, this is a 16-2 run for FDU. Walker nearly has a cutoff, but that's a beautiful extra pass to David Barnes, who slams it home. He's got six. And I think at halftime, Texas Southern probably going to look at about five different clips of their offense versus FDU's de defense and their defense against FDU's offense, just to get a clear idea. They got to get out of Singleton when he's that deep. <laughs> and they had no idea what they were doing on that possession. So that might be one of the clips. Yes. 45-27. <laughs> We are under a minute in this first half, and it really has been somewhat of a clinic by FDU against a very good Texas Southern team. But the one thing I would say about Texas Southern's body language, they're not really complaining. No. They're still playing. They're not pouting. They're, pl they're still hanging in there, but FDU is really, I, I think, overall sending a message that this is going to be a long night for Texas Southern unless something drastically changes. Well, Roberts, with some cool shoes, is out near midcourt. Tobit Anderson just said, spread it out. Almanar with the screen, eight on the shot clock. It's be a step back. Yeah, Walker's on him. They go to the corner, Singleton for three. In and out, loose ball, picked up by Texas Southern. Barnes, length of the floor, sweeps it in for Walker off his thigh. They dish it off for three, no good. Ranger could not convert. Well, that was a very entertaining first half by Fairleigh Dickinson. Yeah, normally when teams start practice, they'll start off with three on twos, two on one situations. Uh, that was one that got away from Texas Southern. Yeah, Barnes may have been better off just going right to the yeah. to the to the hole. Got to be a threat to score yes. first. Yeah, that's the message. And Johnny Jones has been around for a long time. He understands pace of game, and he also understands these caliber of games. They have to somehow defend this because it's really been spread out, the uh, three-point shooting. They have to defend the three, or they're going to have to start making threes at a right. higher level. All right, here we go. FDU with the basketball with the hope to move on to Columbus, Ohio, to take on number one seed, Purdue. Their offense, their motion offense was excellent in the first half. They turn it over. So now Texas Southern will go on offense. And when you have a 16-point lead, you want to make sure that you have sound, solid passes. Play to your strengths. You don't need to start reinventing the wheel here. Barnes air ball. Yeah, because even if you don't score, you want to run some clock efficiently, too. Singleton to Roberts. Almanor up to London. Sean Moore had a good first half. He's number 11. Munden tries to split through the defense. He's caught. High post jumper is no good. And that's what happens when they spread you out. They get in there driving, kick game, penetrating pitch. Barnes underneath. Whistle blows. And he went out of bounds. Barnes has had a tough night. You know, he began the SWAC championship. Avery won for his first 13 and then was four for his last five. And this is a guy that had 22 points against Kansas. Right. Kansas is the number one seed in the tournament. So he's very capable. Almanor for three, it's good. He picks up right where he left off in the first half. He has 11 points. That was a nice little flare screen. And when you have a big guy that can spread the floor, put bigger defenders in the bind. Yeah, Tobit Anderson said Almanor taught him a lesson because we talked about it before where he, he said he could not play in this system and he proved him wrong. Nicholas with the first bucket of the second half for Texas Southern. And right now, if I'm Texas Southern, 
any type of string in action, I'm switching all five players. Singleton can't convert. If you don't switch and switch up the line and force FDU to make maybe one more pass, make another decision. Otherwise, when your bigs are in what we call a, a drop, you can't play that type of defense against this team. They're too Barnes covered by Roberts. There's a little screen. Barnes for three. It's good. Actually, it's a two-point field goal. He was just inside the line, but that's okay. Right now, Texas Southern, they have to score any way they can and give Coach Johnny Jones credit for, you know, not subbing, subbing Barnes out after a lethargic start this half. And there's a foul on the floor. So here it is. So you see the ball, a lot of focus obviously is on, on Dimitri Roberts, but this is the guy that you need to pay attention to. And here comes the screen from his teammate right there. Nice job yeah. and good separation on that plate. Outstanding screen by Sean Moore. Well, here's Roberts running the point to Manuel. Roberts underneath, and he stepped out of bounds. So he did exactly what P.J. Henry did a couple of possessions ago. Get complete coverage of NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. All right, so Barnes will inbound the basketball to Henry. And I love it that uh, you look at FDU, Coach Anderson's got them in their three-quarter court pressure. Remember, this gave Texas Southern problems early in the game. They turned it over a couple of times. Barnes up top. He's got a size advantage if he wants to use it. Henry, he'll set up to take a three. No good. He falls to the floor thinking he can draw a foul. Nobody back on defense. FDU taking it the length of the floor and going up it's strong and it's fouls is Munden, so he'll go to the free throw line. All four Texas Southern players went to the glass. You gotta at least have one player back and FDU capitalized on it. Well, that'll send uh, Munden to the free throw line. He's 71%. Double figures in 17 of 27 games. His first free throw is good. There's Charles McClellan, who's the SWAC commissioner. Uh, he's currently the vice chair of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee. He will move into the chairman's position next year. Yeah, I had a chance to spend some time with Charles and the team last night. We had yeah. a lot of fun. And he hired Coach Johnny Jones. I didn't realize that until you said it last night. <laughs> He's a good judge of character. Yeah, when Mike Davis left for Detroit, Johnny Jones stepped right in. Mike Davis, who has taken a uh, tex taken Texas Southern to the NCAA tournament four consecutive years, Johnny Jones has done it three consecutive years. Three-point field goals. You know, we said they're at the bottom in college basketball, 28.4, but tonight they're 0 for 10. Henry to Walker. Walker, little help defense. Walker, oh, he's so athletic. Count the bucket, and he's fouled by Emmanuel. And maybe that's a recipe for success for Texas Southern, trying to get the old-fashioned three-point plays since they're struggling from behind the three-point line. Nice body control from John Walker the third. This is, we talked about it in pregame, familiar territory for him. So we'll see if he can step up and, and lead his team and maybe get this 14-point uh, deficit in the single digits. Yeah, he has 12. They're just two of three from the free throw line. Yeah, Walker has three rings. And if you're going to leave college with that many rings, you've had a successful career. And Roberts is bumped by P.J. Henry. But if I'm FDU, Tom, i got to be a little careful on that baseline. You know, you bring it in what we call another defender. The baseline is that third or second defender sometimes. Yeah, and he's had trouble in this half as he's working along that baseline. And he just stepped on it a couple of plays back. Roberts will inbound. He gets it into Amanor. Hmm. He went out of bounds. I thought there was a foul call, but Larry Strato, who's an excellent official, pointed right down to the sideline. Yeah, it looked like he got pushed 
So good. It's a break for Texas Southern, but unfortunately um, not for FDU. DJ Henry speeding up into the front court. Listen, this is a 14 point game. They get a three and they don't have any. If they get a three here, they can make it 11. High low, Walker underneath has it stripped away out of bounds. The last one we mentioned that they put up a, a banner in the Raptors with their national championships from bowling and fencing. Here's Walker into the paint, slips it down low, and the ball is loose on the baseline, picked up by the Knights. Yeah, unfortunately in that situation, Walker had Granger in the left corner for a three and decided to try to go high low in that situation on that penetration. Lijan trying to find an opening, gets it to Reynolds. Reynolds had a pretty good first half, too, for FDU. Singleton back to Blygen, shot clock under 10. Singleton way downtown, no good off the side of the rim. Looks run out by FDU, Reynolds lost it. Henry, and it's stripped away by Singleton. The call foul on him as Granger was going to the hoop. Yeah, but good hustle by Singleton, especially when you get back. There's Jody Anderson, Tobin Anderson's uh, wife, and his uh, their son Bryce to the right. And Alexa, their daughter to the left. Tobin said, I, I told the kids I got a Division I head coaching job. They started to cry because they thought we were going to move. He goes, I'm, just, I'm in the same house. Yep. He's only 20 minutes away from right. the school. <laughs> you know that feeling. Rarely when you get another job that you don't have to move. So they went from tears of sadness about moving to tears of double joy. Dad's got a Division I job and they don't have to move. They're hoping to move to Columbus to take out the number one seed, Purdue. Almanor gets it outside. London. And he's fouled going up. It's 50 to 36 FDU. So they're the FDU fans, and there are a lot of them. So they got on a bus this morning in Teaneck at 6.30. And they arrived here a couple hours ago. It's a long drive. I've made it from New Jersey. It's a long one. It's pretty, but it's a long drive. And they're going to go to Columbus if they win. As Munden makes the free throw. If they are successful, um, I think those fans would follow him wherever they go. Right. <laughs> yep. Munden's second shot. It's good. Well, they're um, they're doing well beyond the arc. Tobin Anderson's team, but they're also 14 of 15 from the free throw line. 52-36. Gilliam. But see the spacing? Did you notice Walker and Farouk standing together? Yeah, they were at, at each other's hip. And Walker fouled on the floor by Reynolds. The real competition is on HGTV's Door to Door Renovation War. Four teams tackle four identical houses on an all new Rock the Block, Monday at 9, 8 Central on HGTV. What happens is when you have two offensive players standing together, Basically holding hands, one defender can guard both of them. A really good point. Walker taking the inbound, sweeps the pass. He found a man open. Gilliam up top. Are they gun shy with the threes right now, Avery, or did they just feel like they were pressured too much? Yeah, I just think they're passing up open threes. Baruch can't convert there. 0 for 11 now. Texas Southern has come back from a 16-point halftime deficit before they came back against Jackson State. Scored 53 second-half points. The foul is called on Almanor. And what happens is when you have a wide-open rhythm three and you shoot an air ball, it's just really deflating. Yeah, that's a, what I'm wondering if they're starting to look at the numbers. They know what they are. The big board up here has him. You know how sometimes a fast break dunk can energize a team? Yes. Same thing with a three. That's a pretty good move. And Almanor is called for another foul. That means uh, Texas Southern will go to the free throw line. Colby Granger. But you notice that FDU, they're sending help to double team John Walker the third. And sure, it's somewhat of a size difference, but it's also because they want to get into their trapping game 
to try to force some steals. Ranger makes the first one. Play the official bracket games of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness men's and women's bracket challenge games are here. So get your bracket started now at play.ncaa.com. Both free throws are good for Granger, the freshman whose dad is the athletic director at Texas Southern, was a wonderful basketball player in his own right. There he is, Kevin. He led the slack in scoring one of his years at Texas Southern. Oh yeah, he could fill it up. Almanor can't convert. He probably would have made three threes in that game. <laughs> Walker with a good catch and save. Oh, man. Ball is loose. Gilliam protected. Ranger for three, no good. Walker trying to get the rebound, he lost it. He was off balance. I'm just fascinated, again, about how Texas Southern are missing these threes. That was another three that didn't even hit the rim. Right. It hit the bottom of the right side of the backboard. Roberts is going to be called for that foul after he lost the basketball as he and Granger battled. Here's Kevin Granger. He's yeah. the AD, Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, is his uh, direct title. Yeah, I'm sure Kevin Granger is baffled. Not so much that, you know, they're down and they're missing shots, but how they are missing these shots. Yeah, because as you mentioned, a lot of them aren't even close. And you would think that Texas Southern, that they wouldn't be the nervous team. It would be a team that would come out with confidence. We've, we've been here before. We've been on this court, on this stage. We know how this works, but man, FDU has just been just extraordinary in a lot of ways, especially on the offensive end, the way they're executing the offense. Everybody's touching the ball. Roberts step back, free throw line, jumpers, good. First field goal since there was 18.41 to play in the second half for FDU. And again, Texas Southern hasn't been able to cut into the 16-point lead. No, because it's an equal opportunity offense. That's right. Almanor knocks it out of bounds. This kid is really impressive. Yeah, when you're a smaller player, look at this fadeaway to create that separation over a taller defender. He went to uh, Mount Vernon High School, which is an excellent basketball and academic school. It's some NBA players that went to Mount Vernon. Ball is swatted away. Munden knocked it away. Singleton, Almanor into the paint. Almanor can't finish. I think he was surprised he was that open, right? <laughs> yeah, he was surprised, and he was in on some traffic. 12.04 to play in the second half. Lijan checks in for FDU. Lijan checks in for FDU. And back in is David Barnes. David Barnes for uh, Texas Southern. He and John Walker. have put together a program called Be a Champion, which uh, helps bring healthy meals to kids in the Houston area. Barnes gets that one to go off the front of the rim. And it'll be interesting, you know, this next time out with this roster, I truly believe that Texas Southern, they're gonna have to finish this game with John Walker III at the center spot. Definitely separating themselves and, and also Dimitri Roberts, you know, this guy, you know, Coach Robinson talked about he's tough. He's relentless. He's, he's amazing. Um, this is a situation where great things come in small packages. And a lot of the young people that are watching this game that are under six feet tall, there's hope for you in Division I college basketball. And he has a coach and Coach Tobin Anderson that believes in him, that even down the stretch of games, he knows the ball is going to be in his hand. I think that's a great way to put it for the youngsters out there. He's five foot eight on paper. I don't know if he is. <laughs> But he's got great confidence in himself, and he's extremely competitive. Singleton, spinning bounce pass to Moore. Under 11 to play. And he's not really a traditional point guard. He's a lead guard. 
Does that mean he can play both? He can play on or off the ball. Arizona State is arriving. Hopefully their sign stays up as they walk past it. It was pretty interesting how we've gotten a chance to interview all of the coaches and in this next game, Steve Alfred and Bobby Hurley. Wow. Really? Yeah, it's a, a big time matchup. <laughs> big time. Big time guard matchup. All we need is a broadcaster that can pass the ball. Oh, that was you that can pass the basketball. Well, unfortunately, on this last situation, this is one of the few mistakes Dimitri Roberts has made all night. Yeah, a little bit of a nudge after the uh, ball was loose. Joe Munden will check back in. Kobe Granger to the free throw line. Kobe, uh, they say, has helped solidify this team's defense. He started 13 games, including the last uh, 12. He had 29, and I'm sorry about this, Avery. He had 29 against Southern earlier this year. And he's averaging a little more than 10 points per game in his last nine. Because he converts that. But like a lot of the Texas Southern players, hasn't been able to get going on the floor. But it has been going from the free throw line. Yeah, but we'll see with FDU are committing their seventh foul. We'll see how free throws play That's right. Role. If Texas Southern can get to the foul line, stop the clock, slow the game now. Yeah, because this, there's still plenty of time left plenty in this of time. game. Traveling violation called on Munden. But just what we talked about a few plays earlier in terms of the type of defense Texas Southern should utilize, switch all five. They switched every position. And relied on their athleticism, right? Yeah. They forced seven turnovers in this second half. They haven't really been able to capitalize. Gilliam hopping to the basket, got position off the glass. It's a 10-point game. And that's his first bucket. And in those situations, FBU, they got to slide over and take charges because Texas Southern is a team that will turn the ball over, make them make the one more pass. Now Texas Southern is utilizing their 1-2-2 two, two full court trap. Little 6-0 run for Texas Southern. And another kickball, that's the second one. 9.49 to play here in the second half. And, and it feels like FDU hasn't been uncomfortable the entire game. I would agree with that. There may have been like a two-minute spurt in the first half after they jumped out to the lead, but you're right. Here's that track. And a foul is going to be called against Granger. Colby Granger called for that foul. That's four fouls on him. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. We know all of the fans here are not Texas Southern fans, but the entire crowd booed on that situation, except for the FDU fans. Yeah, that, that didn't look like there was much of a foul there. Now that was a foul. Yeah, that's a foul. Carl Nicholas, 17 foul. So now FDU will go to the free throw line for the rest of the half. And it seems like you almost need to shade two players towards Dimitri Roberts to force him to pass the ball to another one, one of his teammates. Yeah, because he's he's too quick, it seems, for a lot of these guys right now. Yeah. All right, so FDU, 14 of 15 from the free throw line, now 14 of 16. Nicholas with the rebound. Well, he got up there. See the foul trouble. Granger with four. Jordan Carl Nicholas with three. And Farouk with three. Gilliam into the paint. Just throws it up, in and out. And a foul going to be called against Nicholas. Texas Southern foul. Jordan Carl Nicholas is fourth. Team 10. Speaking of Nicholas, he and John Walker the third will be part of the 2023 HBCU All-Star game. Yeah, congratulations to both of those players. Well deserved. I'm excited to be on the call again this year uh, with our buddy Clark Kellogg. Oh, uh, that's awesome. And then, you know, it's not just about those guys. Remember, I'm a team player. 
Travis Williams, the executive director and CEO of HBC All-Stars. This was his vision. It was amazing. And then I get a chance to get some of the band back together again. Corey Fishman, George Wishart, and Ryan Mason. Ice Cube is doing a good job with that lead. Uh, <laughs> Corey's our director. Jason Ross, our producer, he's, he's not on that, that call right there. We'll see him down the did, road. Did you though. mention Jason Ross? I did. Oh, boy. Oh. You did <laughs> I it. I love him. I love him. I love him. Edmundon is fouled on the floor. Nine ten to play here in the second half. Gilliam called for his first, and it'll send Munded back to the free throw line. He's six for six from the free throw line. Front ends. It's good. He's got 14 points. He averages ten and a half. Out of the Bronx and Monsignor Scanlon High School. And right now, in this last nine minutes and ten seconds, who can take care of the basketball? Taking care of the basketball is very important. And play defense without fouling. Here's a 3-2 zone, 1-2-2 half-court zone. Gilliam tries to get it up to Walker. He almost threw it away. What zone did you like as, as a coach? Two, three for sure. Yeah. Did you match it up or was it? Sometimes when the ball went in the middle, match up man to man. Barnes into the paint, off the glass, offensive foul. Well, you said it. FDU has to st start taking some charges, and they take one right there. Because when you look at FDU, you know, they're not really a, a great shot blocking team, so. Their position defensive team, nice job. And that's what happens. Guys knock down threes like Almanor, but what are you going to do to contribute to your team on the defensive end? Yes, because if you're going to have success in the NCAA tournament or any tournament, you've got to play defense. Singleton, they break the press, and he's bumped. And he'll go to the free throw line. That foul is going to be called on multi. It's just a different speed from Dimitri Robinson, Grant Singleton. They have another gear, and once they slow down, they can kick it in another gear. Singleton two for two from the line. Knocks that down. Singleton is not a big kid. He's five foot nine out of Sumter, South Carolina. But he has seven rebounds today. To go along with nine points, that was his ninth. Well, there are going to be a lot of rebounds available time when a team especially is over from the three-point well, line. That, that is true. And, and especially, you know, the ball bounced a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, they're going to be long rebounds. Multi into the paint. Multi gets the roll off the rim. First bucket for him. And Multi trying to steal that one. Mundy going to the basket. Count the bucket. Joe Munden has 17. Nice job here breaking Texas Southern's press. Can't really go for a steal if you can't get it. The 17 points leads all scores. That he's too strong of that. Emmanuel tipped it high in the air, but Texas Southern will have the ball. 62-46. It matches the largest lead, the halftime lead. Eight minutes to play. Walker, turnaround jumper. Doesn't get it. Munden high in the air with the rebound. And Roberts just waiting. London for three, no good. Oh. And Almanor will go to the free throw line. Put a one rewarding performance. A little defense for FDU. Yeah, nice job defensively getting their hands on different plays and just activity. The free throw is made by Almanor. He's got 14. But, you know, these teams are very evenly matched. Obviously, FDU is 
you know, playing well tonight, but these teams play again. Who knows? I would agree with that. TSU can get off to a better start. Johnny Jones is an outstanding coach. I think he was just um, elevated to be the, the head of the SWAC coaches, the president of the SWAC in terms of all of the coaches. And he's done a really extremely good job as a good representative of the SWAC conference. Yeah, he's a good man, and uh, he loves coaching this team. And we talked about the HBC All-Star game. It's, it's at TSU on Texas Southern's campus. First time the HBC All-Star Games is on the HBCU campus. Well, I'm going to order the free throw line where he and everybody else is connected. They have a, a season high in free throws made with tonight's effort. This is the largest lead of the game, 66-46. Henry, he hasn't gotten it going today. Walker in the paint. Walker can't get it to go. Loose ball out of bounds. Touched last by FDU. And unfortunately, I know it's been a struggle, you know, from behind the three-point line for Texas Southern. They're 0 for 12. But I still believe, you know, when you're down 20 with seven minutes to go, you're going to have to take a few threes. Yeah, and will it into the basket at some point. Seven minutes to play. That one off the side of the iron. Almanor with the rebound. That's number seven for him. Got two players with seven rebounds. And now you're seeing FDU having more rebounds than Texas Southern. Munden. This, this offense is hard to guard, especially if you don't see it every, you know, every game. If you just see it one time a year. Yes. And they're going to call a foul. Uh, multi. Again, FDU did not win the NEC. They were up by seven in the championship game and lost to Merrimack. And Merrimack's not representing the NEC because they're transitioning to Division One in years to come. They could. Right. And a lot of times in situations like this, when the team is up big, you want to come down hard on the team that's losing. But we right. got to give FDU credit. They played an extremely well-balanced game. Let's check it with John Rusty. Well, Tom, you had just mentioned that FDU did not win the NEC title and did not get the automatic qualifier. Last week, Tobin Anderson said that even though we're in the NCAA tournament, we still have the taste of blood in our mouth. We didn't do <laughs> what other mid-major teams do. We didn't yeah. get the AQ. That might add to the edge we're seeing tonight, Tom. No, it's a great representation, though, of the conference. I mean, it's a great rep representation that Mary Mack's able to do what they're doing. Walker in the paint. Walker, that's a good shot. They found some space. Yeah, I love John Walker the third. He started off at Texas A&M and has had an extraordinary career uh, at Texas Southern. Wanted to be at Texas Southern. Could have gone to a lot of different schools, but uh, he's been committed to Texas Southern. He has scored over 1,200 points in his career. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of looks. Uh, especially after the season is over. Even if it's overseas, he's a talented young man. There he is in the paint again, draws the contact from Roberts, so he'll get two free throws. P.J. Henry noticed that there was a size advantage. Roberts third, team's eighth. He's a double figures in 26 of the 35 games that he's played. And he converts the free throw. Jordan Carl Nicholas, Jordan Carl Nicholas checks in for Texas Southern. Under six to play for a chance to move on to face Purdue. And it's hard, really, even when you're in your press like this because you can't foul. It'll be blue ball as the uh, ball went off the leg of Multi. According to Tim Smith, Larry Scrato, Brett Smith, who's been officiating since 1993, and Tim Smith. Oh boy, Roberts went down hard. I believe they're going to get Barnes on that one. His third.
It'll send Roberts to the free throw line. Mentioned this before the winner goes on to face Purdue on Friday. On TNT. Roberts makes the first free throw. What do you got going on John Rossi? Well you mentioned if FDU wins this they will play P Purdue on Friday. 35 years ago on March 17th 1988. Who did FDU play in the NCAA tournament? Purdue Tom. Wow. Gene Cady's uh, Purdue Boilermakers. How's your uh, tracker going today John? What, how many steps are you into? Right now I am at 5300 steps. <laughs> Usually it's about 10,000 but you know I think with going back and forth in our next game I'll get to eight or nine. I would think so. How many steps are where are you today? I'm at 2200. <laughs> <laughs> 520 to play here in the second half. I'm one step right behind John. My wife is watching. <laughs> Shot clock is under 10. Singleton extra pass. To Emmanuel, jump stop and good. What a fundamentally sound two foot jump stop from Manuel. Good looking young freshman. Played 15 minutes in the NEC conference tournament finals. And Multi finally gets a three pointer for Texas Southern. They're on the board. 71 53 452 to play here in the second half. Here are the head coaches in their first season with their current team. A lot of those guys have had some really good years in the NCAA tournament. Rodney Terry's done a wonderful job at Texas. He really has. And so has Jerome Tang at yes, he Kansas has. State. 452 to play here in the second half. Roberts breaks the press with Singleton. They sweep the pass to the corner. Now FDU, they're not going to shoot quick unless they have a layup opportunity. The clock is their friend, so they'll move it around and try to start making, start taking a shot inside of eight seconds. Singleton with 11 on the shot clock. He saw an opening and he converted. He has 13. Nine one as far as three point field goals go. Walker slices right to the basket. He is 18. Yeah, there's no quitting. John Walker the third. He's going to continue to fight and play hard. Four minutes to play here in the second half. Almanor, he's got a three as well. Wow, this is a shooting exhibition right now. He's got 20. But it's just a guard play. Yes. Largest lead of the second half. Unfortunately for Texas Southern, P.J. Henry only has two points. That's a guy that can easily get you 25 or more. Yeah, they've just missed their last three shots around the basket and that one three, two. 325 left to play, second half. Palmador feeling it. Oh, that's good, too. How about that? They are just connecting left and right. 23. Yeah, but two consecutive times, Grant Singleton made the extra pass. Yes. And then somebody else got what we call a hockey assist. They found Singleton, and then he did Almanor to knock down that three. 11 three-pointers for FDU in this game. And you got to give FDU's defense credit. You know, this is a team that you know, gives up, what, 74 points a game? And... Roberts throws it up, no good. Multi snaking up the floor, slips it, saved by Singleton. Wow. Two on one break here. Moore going right to the rim. Oh, it's swatted from behind. That's going to be goaltending, though. And this is a, an amazing story, folks. Somebody who just wanted a chance. He got it at Division Three, got it at Division Two, and now has gotten it at Division One. And his team is in total control with two and a half minutes to play in the second half. Yeah, the, the highs and lows of a NCAA basketball season, it has an effect on families. Absolutely. So maybe you'll have one family that's really happy and. You know, Johnny Jones' wife Kelly is a beautiful lady. They have two beautiful kids, and 
she's not going to be as excited, but her and Johnny Jones, same way with the Andersons. They've done an amazing job to bring their teams this far because it's a family affair. Almanor, no good. Try to get to above his career high, which is 25. He is 23 in today's game. Walker right to the basket. Little kiss off the glass. He is 22. His motor's continuing. And now you see, you know, basically, FDU's going to uh, run the clock down. Roberts, a little shake and bake. Man, his ball handling and hand-eye coordination. Look at the elevation on that shot. 17-footer. And now, Tobit Anderson's going to get some of uh, the players in that play some, but not a lot. As his team will now prepare to take on Purdue. 118 left on the clock. And it's, it's really exciting for those guys who don't really get a chance to play because what happens is a lot of the guys that's on the court now, they're part of the scout team. So they played the roles of Texas Southern, you know, whether it was John Walker III or P.J. Henry in practice the last couple of days. There's Danny Rodriguez covering Walker up top. Rodriguez, a senior from Newark, New Jersey. All right, so they have to face Purdue, and they are the shortest team, Fairleigh Dickinson is, in the NCAA tournament. And Zach Eady is, uh, well, he's a large human being. And it'll be interesting in terms of the, you know, the E.D. Almanor matchup, especially in those pick and rolls because, right. you know, Ansley Almanor can pop back, he, the dribble handoff, pitch, pop. And we know, obviously, E.D.'s a handful when he's on defense. Sure is. Offense. Carter for three, no good. Multi with the rebound. He'll loft the three. That's no good. And the rebound is... Take it down by Racine. Yeah, those in transition, he's going straight down the middle of the floor and he seals in the paint. Wow, I don't think you're going to be able to find a defender even if he's standing behind him. Multi with some quick hands. Multi, and he lost it out of bounds. So they, they've been to the NCAA tournament, Texas Southern, three consecutive years. Walker, who just checked out, 22 points, nine of 17. And you know how hard it is, especially with the way they started off conference play. They were injured. P.J. Henry was out. And, man, they went on a on a really heck of a run in the SWAT tournament. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, even though, you know, they weren't successful tonight, they've been successful in the first four. Three, no good. Yeah, three consecutive tournaments they've made it to. So three rings, eight seconds left, multi. Will dribble it out. FDU, for the second time in school history, has won an NCAA tournament game. They win it 84 to 61 in Tobin Anderson's first trip to the dance. And now they take on the number one seed, Purdue Boilermakers. They'll go to Columbus, and the busload of Knights yeah. will head to Columbus with them.